Hey, you. So the second book I read in the summer of 2024 was Espadair Street, Ian Banks' 1987 fictional rock and roll memoir, which is full of drugs and sex and just a little bit of violence. But true to form, Banks handles it all with the enviable finesse that I've come to expect from one of my all-time favorite authors, despite the fact that this book is far from his usual fare. Espadare Street follows the life of Daniel Weir, a former rock star who is in the process of reflecting on his tumultuous past. Weir was the bassist and primary songwriter for the fictional rock group Frozen Gold, a Pink Floyd-esque band that rose to fame in the 1970s. The novel teeters between Weir's present life of solitude and reflection and flashbacks to his earlier days of excess and chaos within the music industry. Over the course of the book, we see that the band's success is blemished by internal conflicts, the insanely destructive effects of fame, and some personal tragedies. Weir's relationships with his bandmates are really at the core of the narrative, which dives deeply into Weir's struggle with his identity, the price of fame, and the consequences of his own lifestyle choices. Thematically, Espadare Street explores how the pursuit of stardom can lead to isolation and self-destruction. Weir's story is a sterling example of the double-edged sword of success, where the glitz and the glamour can often be overshadowed by loneliness and regret. The dynamics between Weir and his bandmates point to the complexities of friendship and loyalty, and this shines a light on the way even very close bonds can be strained by the pressures of fame. Themes of repression and solitude are explored through Weir's later reclusive lifestyle as he attempts to escape the ghosts of his past and evade reality through various means, not least being heavy substance abuse and even heavier denial. Weir's reflections on his past are steeped in remorse, and this drives the story as he grapples with his choices and finally seeks redemption. It's no secret that I love Ian Banks, particularly his Ian M. Banks sci-fi novels. And as I've stated in previous videos, I'm currently working my way through his entire body of work. Espadare Street is the first book in his oeuvre that is just a straightforward narrative with no real genre elements whatsoever. And while it's highly accessible for that reason, I was admittedly waiting for the proverbial shoe to drop the entire time. When it never did, I was pretty surprised and honestly just a little bit disappointed that there were no extra layers to it. But without a doubt, that had more to do with my own expectations rather than with any of the book's actual shortcomings. And overall, I think it's a very well-realized and unique novel in his catalog, and I did give it four and a half stars. I think that this passage uh, toward the end of the novel really sums it up well. I left the flat depressed, but as I walked down Espadare Street, back into town under a glorious sunset of red and gold, slowly a feeling of contentment, intensifying almost to elation, filled me. I couldn't say why. It felt like more than having gone through a period of mourning and come out the other side, and more than just having reassessed my own woes and decided they were slight compared to what some people had to bear. It felt like faith, like revelation, that things went on, that life ground on regardless and mindless and produced pain 
and pleasure and hope and fear and joy and despair. And you dodged some of it and you sought some of it. And sometimes you were lucky and sometimes you weren't. And sometimes you could plan your way ahead and that would be the right thing to have done. But other times, all you could do was forget about plans and just be ready to react. And sometimes the obvious was true and sometimes it wasn't. And sometimes experience helped, but not always. And it was all luck, fate, in the end. You lived, and you waited to see what happened. And you would rarely ever be sure that what you had done was really the right thing or the wrong thing. Because things can always be better, and things can always be worse. So in my tier ranking of the books I've read this year, I am going to place Espadair Street right here behind the first murder bot entry and just in front of Notes from Underground. It was highly insightful and enjoyable despite being a much more standard, straightforward narrative than I'm used to getting from Banks. And this is definitely where it belongs for me. If you've read Espadair Street, I would love to hear your thoughts. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.